Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. You know the concept of IQ, right? Someone who will do well on IQ tests, right? Intelligence quotient. Someone who can do math. Someone who can break down information, right? Well, there's another dynamic, another realm. It's called EQ. It's someone who sees the big picture, right? Is emotionally plugged in to what's going on. Knows how to massage egos, right? Uh, diminish conflict. Get people on the same page. Now, if there are two positions in the world of sports that require a high EQ, I would argue that one is quarterback and another is point guard. Right? So, in the eternal quest to get an edge on the casino, I believe all of us have to get a little psychological and have to ask ourselves about the EQ of the point guard on a point guard centric team in assessing that team's chances of winning games or the title, right? It's my belief that your point guard really has to be emotionally plugged in. Not just a smart guy, but an emotionally healthy guy. I know this video sounds touchy-feely. I'll take my chances, right? But what I've found is that dysfunctionals, people who might be brilliant, but who can't relate to others have a very hard time leading teammates in those situations. Dare I say that's actually a team disability, right? That's a team shortcoming. In my opinion, the point guard doesn't have to be your best friend if you're a teammate. But the point guard at least has to know how to be a friend, right? You can't have someone who's emotionally tone deaf in the point guard position. Before I go further, let me just say, just go back and look at NBA history. Look at the teams that win titles, right? You're going to find that, you know, the Showtime Lakers, Magic Johnson. Uh, Magic has great people skills, right? He seems to be one of those rare celebrities who can relate to fans and who looks like he's enjoying himself. When he played basketball, it looked like he enjoyed the game. It looked like he enjoyed his teammates. It looked like his teammates enjoyed him. Right? When Magic stepped on the court, there's a certain leadership that's above and beyond his Hall of Fame ability. Right? You know, Michael Jordan. I understand that Michael Jordan has a chip on his shoulder even today. Right? That Hall of Fame speech he gave was cringeworthy. No question about it. But in dealing with teammates, right, he and Dennis Rodman, and Rodman, we'll just call him a colorful personality, he and Dennis Rodman had no problems getting along. He and Scottie Pippen, another superstar on the team, understand Scottie Pippen was named one of the 50 best players in NBA history. I believe if we did a new ranking today, he'd still be one of the top 50 players in NBA history. Jordan and Pippen were on the same page. Right? Michael Jordan, as dominant as he was, had the support of teammates, had the support of his coach, saw the big picture. 
Now I've just read through the Rage and Rondo section of the current ESPN magazine. Now understand Rondo did win an NBA title, but he won it with a veteran team that was right to win an NBA title. Right? Kevin Garnett did not have a lot of success in the playoffs. He was prepared to make sacrifices when he got to the Boston Celtics. Right? Paul Pierce is one of those superstars who can play with others. Right? As dominant as Paul Pierce was in his prime, he always seemed to get along with teammates. Ray Allen, the same way. In other words, these vets were ready to come together. Now there is Rage and Rondo, and let me just say this. After reading this piece, a piece in which Tom Thibodeau is quoted in the piece, and Thibodeau used to work with Rondo, as saying that Rage and Rondo doesn't sleep at night. Right? It's a piece that gives you the impression that Rage and Rondo is up at night learning the playbook, shows up at practice the next day, and then is openly defying his head coach's authority, right? Questioning whether the head coach even knows the playbook better than he does. I would classify Rage and Rondo as not having the highest EQ. I know this is controversial. You know what? Let's be blunt, right? We're trying to assess risk in making bets. This is not political, politically filtered, you know, politically correct talk here. This is the adult portion of the internet. Let's be blunt, right? When you're assessing talent, you need to make some hard calls. In my opinion, after reading this piece, Rage and Rondo doesn't have the highest EQ. Rage and Rondo, quite frankly, isn't the kind of guy, whatever his ability, right, who's going to make the kind of decisions at the point guard decision, uh, position that a guy with a high EQ would make. Right? Rondo got to Dallas immediately starts having problems with Rick Carlisle, immediately starts yelling at Carlisle during games. The CSPN magazine has an exchange where Rick Carlisle is on the sideline and he calls in a play to Rondo as point guard, and Rage and Rondo, who's one of the newer Mavericks, in other words, no seniority, says to his coach, I'll effin and I'm censoring here, I, I'll effing call the plays, right? Now, all I can say is this. That doesn't sound like something Magic Johnson would ever consider doing, right? That doesn't sound like the kind of thing that's going to have teammates reassured that when the bullets start flying and the game gets tense and you need calmness, and someone who's the kind of leader who's going to get everyone on the same page, that that's what's going to happen, right? In my opinion, you need to fade the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA playoffs. If Rage and Rondo's getting significant minutes at the point guard position, look, maybe the guy is a genius. Maybe the guy is, you know, truly brilliant, Right? The point guard position requires more. It requires someone with people skills, just like the quarterback position does. Right? You can't have someone who is socially awkward and dysfunctional, who can't kind of look around the room and sense what everyone's trying to accomplish and understand that as the new guy on the team, he can't be cursing at the coach and openly defying authority, regardless, regardless of who knows the playbook better, right? 
I just don't believe that guys like this can win championships unless the stars align and they happen to be with Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen at a time in their careers where those three guys were willing to make sacrifices to win a ring. Right? Raging Rondo, as brilliant as he is, might be a net negative on a team. Dallas just needs to look at its offensive efficiency before Rondo and after Rondo. Right? I'm not saying Raging Rondo's a scrub and can't play. What I am saying is, in addition to asking yourself, what's this guy's ability on the court? There's a deeper question. If the guy is a point guard or a quarterback, right? Does this guy have the EQ to lead teammates? I'll tell you, the NFL draft, these quarterback prospects, there's an open question on Marcus Mariota. Now, I happen to be a Mariota fan. I'm a Pac-12 guy. I've watched Mariota for years. Right? For years. Um, very calm guy. Right? Now, sometimes that's great. Calm under pressure. Always. Right? Makes great decisions on the field. Right? The question with him is, is his personality the kind of personality that can emotionally connect with teammates to lead them? Right? There aren't those questions about Jameis Winston. Because Winston looks conversational. Right? Winston looks like he has a big personality and he's the kind of guy who... Looks like he'll remember everyone's name and walk up to you and actually have a friendly relationship with you. Marcus Mariota is what John Gruden calls a flatliner. Now to the rest of us, hey, shouldn't be a big deal. Just look at winning percentages, look at stats, both guys can play. But if you're a team, you understand you need to look deeper, right? Is this guy going to be a loner at a position where you can't afford to have a loner? Right? Is this guy going to know his wide receivers, develop a rapport with them, his tight ends, right? his offensive line? In other words, is this guy going to be like Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning? Right? Guys with rings. Right? Guys who've been successful. Is he going to be like Andrew Luck? A guy who looks like teammates love him. Right? A guy who just looks like a natural leader. Or is he going to be that talented guy who can't get on the same page with teammates? Where there's some level of inefficiency and non-performance right where teammates in him don't quite seem to click you know it when you see it i'm not going to name names on that but you know it when you see it when teammates don't have a guy's back in part because of the guy's low eq i think we're seeing that in dallas right now the Mavs are obviously in the playoffs. My point to you is in assessing their chances rather than just looking at the numbers. Think about the chemistry of that team, right? Given the number of people in leadership positions throughout the Western Conference with point guards who have very high EQs, I'll name two. Uh, Steph Curry is a superstar who's loved by teammates, right? He's a superstar who is not a prima donna. He seems to understand the need to get teammates involved, however great his shot is. 
get teammates involved, have everyone running the court, etc. I would argue Chris Paul is a guy who has mastered Los Angeles, right? Celebrity-driven town. But yet, Chris Paul has self-deprecating commercials, right? Is it Chris Paul or Cliff Paul, right? Seems to get along with the big men on the team, DeAndre Jordan, Blake Griffin, right? Seems to be Doc Rivers' second set of eyes on the court none of us here could ever envision. Chris Paul yelling, I'll call the effing plays to Doc Rivers, right? I would argue Mike Connolly, very high EQ guy, right? Tony Parker, very high EQ guy. I would say you have to have a high EQ to be a very successful point guard in the NBA, in the playoffs, right? I question the EQ of Rage and Rondo whatever the talent level, right? However well intended that young man is, I would put him in the doesn't work well with others category, right? If you're expecting 30 minutes from Rage and Rondo in the playoffs, Dallas, then in my opinion, you have no chance. One man's opinion, let me hear yours. Leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Let me point out, too. We'll just pretend we're NFL scouts. If you meet a guy and he is socially awkward at 22 years old, you really have to ask yourself, is this guy going to develop the people skills necessary to handle the quarterback position? Right? I don't need guys with high EQs at wide receiver. I can have a Terrell Owens at wide receiver, right? He's going to say inappropriate things in press conferences and not have any idea about the fallout or consequences, right? He's going to alienate people in the locker room. He's going to be silly enough to be criticizing Donovan McNabb and stuff like that uh, as part of his effort to get a higher salary. Right? That's okay. You can be a jackass at wide receiver. The point of this video is you can't allow yourself to have a jackass at quarterback or at point guard. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.